Welcome to this Kubernetes crash course for complete beginners. My name is Misha. I'm a senior DevOps engineer from the Netherlands. I'm a Microsoft MVP and a certified Kubestronaut. And I've taught Kubernetes to well over a thousand people at this point. By the end of this video, you're going to have an understanding of what Kubernetes is, what problems it's solving, and you'll even be deploying your first application. So let's dive right in. I always teach my students that you have to learn by doing with Kubernetes because Kubernetes is so broad it is so much that you have to get hands on as soon as possible. And that's what we're going to do in this video as well. So why Kubernetes? Well, the problem it's solving is managing containers at scale. And let me just give you a quick explanation of that. So traditionally you would have several virtual machines and each virtual machine would run one or more applications that would have your web server. And maybe you would have a separate virtual machine for your databases and these together would be serving your application, whether that is in the cloud or on on-premises uh, deployments. But then containerization came along and you might know this as Docker containers. Well, containerization solved a few problems where you don't need as much resources per application. So now you're able to run many, many containers on one virtual machine which is great because then each container has its own little isolated environment and then it can share the resources from the virtual machine OS or the kernel. Now, this is great and this worked really well, but what if we want to have several containers uh, across multiple virtual machines? How are we going to get the containers over there? Well, one, one solution for that is, for example, Ansible. You can do very intricate things with putting containers everywhere but it gets quite messy very quickly. And it's, it's, it's all imperative. You're saying, put this container here and that's it. So what happens when a container dies and how are you going to um, configure networking to load balance across these containers on multiple machines? These are all difficult problems that the Kubernetes project is solving. So this is where Kubernetes comes in. Like I said, it solves the problem of managing containers at scale. When you have many containers across different servers, and when you are starting to look into scaling, maybe you want your application to scale out when there are a lot of people active, like a newspaper, which is usually read in the morning and in the evening, and in the middle of the day, you don't need as much capacity, for example. And also, how are you going to handle software updates when you have all these containers running everywhere? So. This is what Kubernetes solves. It's what you call a container orchestrator. It orchestrates the deployment of containers over multiple machines. And the simplest way that I can, that I always use with my students is Kubernetes is basically a way of making all of these virtual machines talk to each other intelligently and having this sort of control center over it that manages all of the containers over all of these virtual machines and scales them out and make sure that everything is up and running. So that is the, the simplest way that I can explain it. The benefits of this is that you get automation. So you can tell Kubernetes, I want three containers running and then Kubernetes is handling the rest. This will help you to create scalability. You can scale in and out your application, like I mentioned, and high availability. If one of your containers goes down due to an error, if you have multiple replicas running, then Kubernetes is automatically going to route all of the traffic to the ones that are online and it's going to try and it's going to spin up the other one that has failed. It's going to create a new one for that. So that's a bit of the theory that this is the problem that Kubernetes is solving. Now, how can we get started with Kubernetes? Well, I always recommend the tool Rancher desktop for my students. This is because it is, uh, you can, it's a one click install. You download it, you can download it for app for Mac OS, both Silicon and Intel for windows and Linux. So it runs everywhere. You download it, you start it, and then you have a Kubernetes cluster running. It's really that simple. There are several alternatives. I spent hours and hours researching this, but the, this is the tool to get if you are just starting out. Take my word for it. And I have a full video on my channel that you can find if you search for Rancher Desktop on my channel. So when you install Rancher Desktop, then it will also install kubectl, 
this is the this is called kube control this is the cli the command line interface for kubernetes how you can manage kubernetes clusters from the command line which is what we're going to be doing in a second and when you have installed this then you should be able to run kubectl get nodes so i have my kubernetes cluster over here if i write kubectl get nodes then what we see here is that i have a cluster with one node which is a control plane you might see several nodes it depends a bit on your configuration and your system but this is what um what you will see and if this gives output then you know that you have a kubernetes cluster running you are talking to a kubernetes cluster nodes are what i mentioned here a kubernetes node is basically a virtual machine that is part of a kubernetes cluster a kubernetes cluster can be one or more virtual machines or even bare metal machines so one machine is already a kubernetes cluster but technically um, what kubernetes is basically made for is to make all of these machines talk to each other and clustering them and making making it so that you can expand and contract your cluster as the demand arises so now that we have our kubernetes cluster running let's get into a couple of core concepts the first core concept are pods a pod is the smallest unit of deployment on kubernetes a pod is a collection of containers and a few other things which in which you can run your application so it's important to know that a pod is the unit but inside of the pod you can have multiple containers this is important to remember but usually it's just one container especially when you are a bit just starting out then it's just one going to be one container and pods are also ephemeral just like containers you don't store any state inside of your pods they are meant to be spun up and killed and um, they are ephemeral they can die and be replaced now the second unit is a deployment so a deployment is a collection of pods so if i go to my kubernetes cluster and if i run k run nginx image equals nginx then it's going to create one pod of nginx okay get pods and now i have one pod of nginx running i have one instance of an nginx web server running as a standalone unit this is the smallest unit that you can get now i, I use the k run command and you see that i use k for short for kubectl this you will see this everywhere so if i then want to delete this pod i would say k delete pod and then press tab and then nginx is shown to me and now my pod is deleted again i can say i declare a desired state so for example i want three replicas of nginx i want three instances of my nginx application to run on this cluster figure it out and then when i create this deployment then kubernetes is going to figure it out and deploy that for us it ensures that the current state equals the desired state so when one of these pods dies then it's going to fix that and i'm going to show you that in a in a second so let's just create our first deployment we're going to be creating an again an nginx deployment you will often see nginx used in tutorials like this because it's a very common application but also it has a nice way of verifying that it works by curling or visiting it in the browser so i'm going to create my deployment and now my deployment is uh, running so if i do k get pods now now i see that i have a deployment again uh, a pod again but it's just one instance and why is that well we didn't specify how many replicas we wanted right so that's what we're going to do in the next section so if i if i now do k i have my pods but if i do k get deployment now we see that we have one deployment and that we have one container of one the de of the desired state it's all looking good now what if i want to have multiple instances of this application right well how would we do that let me just first delete the deployment now my deployment is deleted okay get pods i don't have any pods anymore and let's just create the deployment again but now i will pass the flag replicas 
equals 3. So now the deployment is created again, and if I do k get pods now, then we see, hey, now we have three pods running. Do you see that? So just by adding the replicas flag to this command, I now have three instances of my deployment up and running. So if I do k get pods, and if I now, for example, k delete pod, and I just delete one of these, and it's delete now, and if I quickly, if I now quickly run the kgetpods command again, we see that the new one is actually two seconds old now. So this is how quick this went, right? You, you, you could see how quickly this went. So maybe I can open up a second window here. If I do watch n 0.5.2 and then kubectl get pods like this. So now I'm running this every 0.2 seconds. And if I now would delete another one, k delete pod my nginx like this, then look in the bottom screen here, you will see one is deleted very quickly and now it's up and running again. That's how fast it goes. So for a split second there, you could see that the current state was different from the desired state. And then Kubernetes stepped in and created a new pod to make sure that those three replicas that I specified are always online. And this is why Kubernetes is the way to run containers at scale. So now we have our deployment up and running. We have our pods with Nginx up and running. How are we going to connect to this? So a full rundown of Kubernetes networking is out of scope for this video. There is one coming up, so make sure you subscribe. But I will give you a very quick introduction to it. So when we have our deployment here, if I do k get pods o wide, then we see that our pods all get their own IP address, right? So Kubernetes has its own internal network inside of the cluster. Now, what I could do is if I want this container to talk to the other container, I could say, send a curl command to this IP address and it would work. However, the problem is if I delete one of these pods, like this, so we deleted H8. So this is the one H8. This ha had IP16. If I do K get pods O wide again, then here we see that the H8 one is gone and the IP, this, the IP ending in 16 is also gone, right? So the new pod received a new IP address. So there's no way that I could point my traffic to an IP address because this is constantly changing. Because every time I roll out an update, all of my pods have a new IP address. So what are we going to do? Well, the, the way this is solved in Kubernetes is by the usage of services. So I have my pods here, and this doesn't matter how many these are, how big they are. But over, over here, there is something that's called a service. A service is then going to be routing those, the traffic to those pods, and this service which is called a cluster IP service. That's the, the, um, the standard, the, the basic service that you get. There are multiple types, but we'll get into that in a different video. But this gives me a stable IP to refer to. So I'm just saying, hey, if I want to reach my front end deployment, talk to the cluster IP service, and then the cluster IP service is going to handle the rest. So I can freely delete and create new pods under here, it doesn't matter what I'm doing. This service is just one stable endpoint and it's going to handle the routing of the traffic to the right pods for me. So this is how that works. Now let's deploy our first service then. How are we going to do that? Well, in this, uh, the kubectl, kube control has a very neat command for that, which is called expose. So now we're running kubectl expose deployment, my nginx on port 80. And this has now created a service. So if I want to see my service, I can do k get service. And then we see our nginx service over here. You see that it has a type cluster IP. And this is an IP address that is going to be stable. And I can just always point it to there. So if I want to access this service, then, then we use something that's called port forward. So let me run the port forward command here kubectl port forward, and then we're pointing it to a service. 
called my nginx and i'm i'm i want this to be available on port 8080 on my local machine and it needs to connect to port 80 in that deployment so each pod is going to expose pod 80 to the service and we are routing the traffic through there so if i now go to my browser and i do localhost 8080 then we see that i am now presented with a web page welcome to nginx and if i start deleting pods uh, and, and and messing around with things then every time i make a new request to the service this is now going to be routed to one of the pods that i have available and that is in a nutshell how kubernetes networking works and it's very simple very beautiful and it, it is it works extremely well so now we have three pods running. We have an Nginx deployment that is highly available, but what if our traffic increases? What if we want to have a whole bunch of people um, visiting our website? Well, then we can scale our deployment with the following command, the kubectl scale command. I can scale my deployment and I give it to the, I'm, I'm targeting the deployment, my Nginx. And I'm just saying, I want my replicas to become 10. So now, the deployment apps my nginx is scaled if i now do k get pods again we see that i have 10 pods running now they are all if i do k get pods and pipe that to wcl then we get 11 lines which is correct because this is including the top line and we have 10 pods ready um running already if i do k get deployment then we see that we have now a status of 10 of 10 ready and they're all up to date and all available. So this is how easy it is to scale up and down applications um, on Kubernetes. If I, were do, if I were to do this in the old situation with Ansible, then how are you going to figure out where the pod is, uh, how many there are, are already, where you want to place the other ones, how to distribute them evenly, Kubernetes is handling all of this for you. Again, it's container orchestration at scale. And this is why this is such a powerful tool and why it's only gaining in popularity. In fact, the average salary for Kubernetes jobs is $160,000 a year, and the trend is only going upward and there are only more and more jobs uh, coming every single year. So you. Uh, we've seen how we can scale the, the, the pod and the deployment. And now the service is also going to be load balancing the traffic all through that deployment. So this was just a very quick introduction. And I hope you followed along with the CLI commands. It's very important that you get started hands on with this stuff as soon as possible. So install Rancher Desktop and do it quickly. Now, the truth is in, in real life, you are not sitting there and, and saying, uh, give me 10 uh, pods now and you're not sitting there scaling your deployments up and down uh, by CLI commands. This is all handled with KEDA, uh, uh, Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling and you would not be deploying things by running CLI commands. You are doing Git ops for that. And finally, let's just clean everything up what we have deployed. So, so first of all, we have our service, KGET SVC, we have our Nginx service, so let's us delete that first. So that is now deleted. And then we have our deployment. So it wouldn't work if I start deleting pods now, because then, uh, then the deployment would just keep recreating them. If I want to get rid of the pods, I actually have to delete the deployment. So, okay, delete deployment and my nginx and now our deployment is being deleted and if i now do k get pods everything is cleaned up and i have nothing running in my cluster anymore so there you go if you want to get access to this text file and have a list of all the commands then jump into my free community it's all there and this is about as much as i could cram into a 20 minute video kubernetes is a huge topic it deserves a lot more attention but again i want to impress upon you that it's so important to get hands on as soon as possible and i hope this video helped you to do that let me know in the comments what you thought and i'll see you in the next one